super duper facts. Today we're going to look at the worst maritime disaster in the United States history. This involved the Sultana, a Mississippi River steamboat, which exploded on the 27th of April 1865. Firstly, let's take a look at the construction of the boat. It was primarily made from wood. It was built in Cincinnati at the John Liffery Boatyard and was designed for the lower Mississippi cotton trade. Originally the boat carried a crew of around 80 people, even though it was designed with a capacity of 376. However, it was frequently used to carry troops between New Orleans and St. Louis, so its capacity was stretched to limits unimaginable. On the morning of the 15th of April, under the command of Captain James Cass Mason, she was tied up at Cairo, Illinois. When word reached the city that President Abraham Lincoln had been shot at Ford's Theatre, Captain Mason grabbed an armload of local newspapers and headed south to spread the news of the tragedy. He did this because he knew that communication with the south had been almost totally cut off because of the Civil War. The boat travelled down the river and eventually reached Vicksburg, Mississippi. Captain Mason was approached by Captain Reuben Hatch, the chief quartermaster at Vicksburg. Hatch had a deal for Mason, which he couldn't refuse. This involved thousands of recently released Union prisoners of war that had been held by the Confederacy at the prison camps in Alabama and Georgia. They had been brought to a small camp outside Vicksburg to wait a release to the north. At the time, the US government would pay around $2.75 per enlisted man and $8 per officer to any steamboat captain who would take a group north. Captain Mason was in need of the money and Captain Hatch suggested that he could guarantee Mason a full load of about 1,400 prisoners if Mason would agree to give him a percentage of the money. Today, this is basically a bribe. However, Mason agreed. Leaving Vicksburg, the Sultana travelled down the river to New Orleans, continuing to spread the news of Lincoln's assassination. On the 21st of April 1865, the Sultana left New Orleans with about 70 cabin and deck passengers, 85 crew members and a small amount of livestock on board. Approximately 10 hours south of Vicksburg, one of the Sultana's four boilers began to leak. The steamboat slowly went to Vicksburg to get the boiler repaired and to pick up her promised load of prisoners. While in port at Vicksburg, the mechanic wanted to replace the ruptured steam in the boiler. However, Captain Mason knew that it would take a few days and cost him his load of prisoners. Instead, Captain Mason and his chief engineer, Nathan Wintranger, convinced the mechanic to make temporary repairs which only took one day. As the repairs were happening, Sultana took on the paroled prisoners. By the time the Sultana pulled away from Vicksburg on the night of the 24th of April 1865, she was seriously overcrowded with approximately 2,137 people on board. As you can see the capacity of the boat was 376, so trouble obviously lay ahead. The passengers were packed into every available space and the overflow was so severe that in some places the decks began to creak and sag with the weight. For the next two days, the Sultana travelled upriver. On the 26th of April, the Sultana reached Memphis, Tennessee and the crew began unloading 120 tonnes of sugar from the hold. Near midnight, Sultana left Memphis and went a short distance upriver to take on a new load of coal from some coal barges. At around 2 a.m. on the 27th of April, the Sultana was just seven miles north of Memphis when its boilers suddenly exploded. At first, only one boiler exploded. However, this was soon followed by two more. To date, no one truly knows why the boilers exploded. Of course, the quick repairs made will have had some effect. However, the general theory is the result of too much pressure and low water in the boilers themselves. The official cause of the Sultana disaster was determined to be mismanagement of water levels in the boilers, 
worsened by the fact that the vessel was severely overcrowded and top heavy. The exact death toll is unknown, although the most recent evidence indicates there are 1,168 people lost their lives. On the 19th of May 1865, which was less than a month after the disaster, William Hoffman, who was then the Commissionary General of Prisoners, investigated the disaster and reported an overall loss of soldiers, passengers and crew of 1,238. Interestingly, around 760 survivors were transported to hospitals in Memphis. Of these, there were only 31 deaths between April the 28th and June the 28th. In spite of the size of the disaster, no one was ever held accountable.